We are your hosts, John Schulsch and Omar. <laughs> so uh, we thought we'd start with some introductions. My name is John Schloys. I'm a reporter and graphic artist at the Los Angeles Times. We use maps in a lot of our work every single day, and we like OpenStreetMap. Um, right now, I just did a search before we started, and we have about 700 or more maps that we've done in our printed newspaper. So like what other newspaper prints OpenStreetMap uh, for things like locating, you know, homicides like body found here or, uh, um, you know, what land development issues are happening here. And then we have 10,000 uh, mentions on our website for OpenStreetMap, which we use a lot for like our homicides and things like that. So my interest in OpenStreetMap is how can we use OpenStreetMap for journalism? How can we use it to better our maps for journalism? How can I find data in there to tell stories? And uh, my name is Omar Ureta. I am an urban designer. I work for an architecture firm. Um, at our office, we actually use OpenStreetMap data to do site analysis and build contextual 3D models in our, in our work. Um, on the side, I do, um, I'm also an organizer for the Los Angeles chapter of Map Time. Um, yeah. We kind of just kind of make, make, make maps. And, um, and have fun. Yeah, pretty much. But um, to, to that, we're, we're going to talk about, let's get ALA on the map. We're, we're going to talk about the Los Angeles building import case study. The import team really consisted of a lot of people, uh, but four people that really kind of uh, contributed uh, effortlessly is John Schultz, myself, Alan McConkey, who's somewhere out there in the back. Oh, no, right and, the oh, there you go. Or in the front. I got to change that labeling. <laughs> and Manning Simbale, who works for Mapbox. So, you know, this is some Mapbox tiles that, uh, uh, some tiles that Mapbox created that look like the Pokemon Go, uh, but uses OpenStreetMap data. Pokemon Go uses Google data. And this is actually my neighborhood. So, like, our thought is, like, we have to catch all the buildings. All the buildings must get on the map, of which there are quite a few. Uh, so we're going to start with the quiz first. Can anyone tell me what area we're looking at? New York, yeah, great. Okay, in New York, uh, this is all buildings. There's nothing else on this map, it's just buildings. And New York had 1 million buildings and 900 addresses and was done in like 2013 and 2014. Okay, we're going to get harder. Who, what's this one? Chicago, great, yeah. And Ian Dees, who was mentioned before not being here in Germany, that's very sad. He mostly did a lot of this and that was done in 2013. <laughs> what about this one? Seattle, where we are right now. Yeah, and Clifford Snow and some other great people helped do that import and build community around that. That was in 2013 as well. Okay, getting harder. Portland, yeah, good job. Put a yeah. bird on it. So. Yeah, put a, put a bird on put it. A name on it. Uh, these are all the Portland buildings, and uh, that was done in, in 2014, and they had buildings, addresses, and then building uh, types for like residential type buildings. Okay, this is the really hard one. These are just buildings. Anyone? Okay, well, I gotta tell you, like, it really upsets me that they're on the map before Los Angeles. This is Bakersfield. California. <laughs> and I'm really upset about this. Four to six years ago. So this is what Los Angeles looked like at the beginning of this year. These are the buildings. Uh, there's like a few clumps around downtown. Uh, East Hollywood is like a big block that I did. And I feel really bad if anybody came behind me and changed uh, some of the buildings because they didn't use correct OSM tags. I apologize. I am in the church now. I am aware of the rules. And uh, I thank you for being really nice about it. Because I've only been an OpenStreetMap contributor for a year now. Yeah, so. I was myself was a hit and run mapper, as they call it. And I actually did this area right here at Boyle Heights, just east of downtown LA. So how did this get started? Um, it's going to be broken down to a couple parts. Like It all started with an edit on OpenStreetMap wiki. Uh, we're going to talk about how, it, how we planned it, how we done it in phases, how we did mapathons and sort of tutorials to let the importing begin, and kind of next steps with these individuals that kind of kind of pushed it forward with bringing in the community in the Los Angeles area. And I started in 2014 with Ken Schwenke, who used to work for the LA Times. Uh, he posted something because LA County has a GIS department that published all the county outlines to the whole county. That's three million buildings with heights and elevation uh, attributes into it. But he just posted that on there on the wiki. And it sort of just kind of lingered around. And then some guy who like, was a hit and run mapper myself uh, discovered QGIS and the data portal. I was like, oh my god, it was all this data. And OpenStreetMap. And at that point, I thought, you know what? All this building outlines, LA doesn't really have like, buildings on there at all. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take it uh, further and kind of like, get people to start uh, contributing. So I kind of contributed in August 2014. And then what actually kind of started off, I guess Alan had some sort of black magic mechanisms that sort of like uh, monitor OpenStreetMap. I kind of uploaded some, a bunch of buildings and then he just popped out of nowhere and, and contacted me, saying he's interested in, in helping with the building import. This was in September 2014. 
And then he actually introduced me to Map Time LA, and that sort of like is a segue for these kind of these four individuals to kind of start this really awesome group that is supporting uh, individuals. So this is how we planned it. It kind of broke it down to we used OpenStreetMap Open Wiki to sort of set goals, schedule, importing the data, data prep, data merge, QA. We used that area to sort of talk about how we're going to get this kind of thing going. GitHub was another platform we used in terms of uh, determining what attributes, like the elevation and height data, you have to match them with OpenStreetMap tags. We also initiated uh, and talked about Python scripting and the import guidelines as to how individuals are going to be importing this into the whole item. And the cool thing though is like we added, we were trying to merge three data sets together. The building outlines, which is premium buildings, address points, which the county also had, and then building information, which is information that was uh, acquired by the LA County Assessor. Uh, the assessor has information in terms of like what type of building it is, residential, senior family, how many units it has too. And, 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 and well, the cool thing was like when it was built, when year these buildings were built. And so we try to get all these data sets together to generate these OSM files, little bits and pieces. And then we had a sort of like, uh, in the import guidelines, we had to sort of discuss this with the, uh, the OSM community on the list to find out what we're doing is okay and then we can get the go ahead to upload and in, to OpenStreetMap. And um, it can, it, with the GitHub effort, we sort of forked it from the New York effort. You gotta realize there's a lot of imports being done already and it's really cool, especially when some of them are on GitHub, uh, I think most of them, um, where you can sort of like take on and sort of not, and you don't have to start from scratch. You can sort of build off the efforts and you can actually build off on our own what we're doing so far in terms of like doing some of the efforts in your neighborhoods and cities. Um, and then at that point, we started to decide what attributes to add because we had like maybe about what? columns of attributes. Yeah, like should we add swimming pool? Yeah. And then try to match yeah. it to the OSM equivalent. And then uh, we did some scripting and testing. And this is sort of the information that this is, that's available on OpenStreetMap now. Yeah, this is the famous Hollywood and Vine intersection. Uh, there's a really good Starbucks right there and a Trader Joe's. But this is a particular building, uh, uh, an apartment building, and so it came through with different information. So all these red arrows are pointing to the things that came through through the import. There was already some information there for the addresses and the name, but it came through with like building equals apartment, building units equals 140, elevation 155, height 38 all meters. And then the AIN, which is the assessor information number for the county assessor, which allows us to track the property, and the building ID number, which is specific to the GIS department. And it was built in 1925. And then after we sort of planned it out, and it kind of just kind of like. We, we had lives. You, you, you and I have both like full-time jobs. And then Alan was. You know, Alan was does too. Alan yeah. was, we just kind of like lingered out because oh, we yeah, were doing full-time jobs. <laughs> so we kind of snoozed it a little bit. And then somehow, like maybe about five months later, um, this individual who was right next to me started uh, complaining about uh, Silver Lake uh, uh, not having enough buildings. In I was area. like, what the hell, man? This sucks. Yeah. So he sort of joined in around July 2015, and this awesome individual, Manning Sabalis, started like really going into the nitty gritty of the data set in terms of the outlines. This is in the city of Pasadena. Like the Pasadena had somehow like was tracing the, the awnings and the balconies and stuff of, uh, of the buildings. With these two getting together though, what's really awesome is that they sort of helped push it further. Um, after it was sort of like slowing down, they kind of picked it up to speed in terms of scripting and programming. And we actually ended up building, uh, using these three data sets, LA City, LA County, because um, there's a 2014 updated data set in terms of the buildings. We're using the 2000 net data set and the 2015 local role of the assessor. And we're gonna do it through the process of generating OSM files. And these OSM files would be served through a server that would be handled by a tasking manager we've established as a custom tasking manager that goes to JOSM where we review the data, where the bear would check it out and upload the stuff. And um, a quick note, um, if you didn't see that, we didn't add the addresses. Um, Alan made this really terrific graphic uh, in terms of uh, identifying, like there's these multiple buildings, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a mess. It was like, if we talk about addresses and we debate whether we're going to import or join the address nodes to the building shapes, we were going to delay this project for like another year or two and it would just be this monstrous thing. But like for instance, my neighborhood, my, my building, um, I live in an apartment complex, it's four, five buildings. Um, each with four units, and each of them have a unique address. Well, all of those in um, the GIS uh, from the county, they come in as nodes that are stacked right on top of each other, so you have 20 nodes just stacked right on top of each other, and it's like, well, which one do we assign to which part of the building, to which building, and it just became this nightmare where we were just like, we don't know, let's just start with buildings and then move on. Because I am the like, let's get it done kind of guy. Yeah, and we actually, <laughs> so he ended up, John actually ended up cleaning and merging the data sets filed together, and he handed it off to, Manning and the Mapbox team, they actually helped in terms of uh, tag matching for the scripting and, and uh, breaking them into groups. 
you broke up the whole data set into census blocks? Yeah, census block groups. Census block groups. So that would be handled by the OSM task manager. So everybody would, who used the task manager would get little bits and pieces of buildings so you can review and upload onto JOSM uh, and OpenStreetMap. Yeah, and so, you know, just, I, it's really important to say that this effort wouldn't have started like when it did in April without the help of Mapbox. Mapbox was a huge help in getting this rolling and Manning approached us. Mapbox was separately thinking about how can we get buildings. I mean, they, they really want to push and improve the map and so they're looking in different communities and so they, they were like, let's, let's, let's focus on LA. And then they decided to reach out to us and then use us for local support. So the really nice thing is that um, they, they, they wanted us to be like kind of the locals to be kind of running the show so that Mapbox could come and do the validation, do help kind of push the import forward because after you import, I don't know, 100,000 buildings, you get kind of tired of it. Like I kind of got really tired. And so, so it was really great of them to, to, to jump in and do that. So big props to them. And since we're talking about three million buildings, we broke it up into four phases. To, to actually start seeing if this actually does work when the scripting works in the real world setting, we started doing uh, one big part of, uh, one small part of LA, the city of LA. And after one, phase one was done, we sort of, we updated the documentation, checked for any outcomes and sort of like how can we, and like if people misinterpreted the, the import guidelines, we went back and updated the documentation. Once that was kind of updated, we went to the rest of the whole city of LA, and now we're, we're sort of finished right now at this point uh, with the city of LA. We're moving now into importing the rest of the county, except for Pasadena, of course, because uh, their data set's really, really interesting. Very ugly, I hate it. So we're leaving them behind. <laughs> so now we're, we're sort of like letting the, planning to let the building import begin. Now this is sort of how, and like, uh, sort of using an import as a way of uh, engaging and bringing new people into, the, into OpenStreetMap to familiarize themselves with the, 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 the platform in itself. And the building import is really cool because it's like a window of opportunity, you could say, in terms of bringing people and local interest to OpenStreetMap. And uh, we sort of brought the mapathons in terms of, and this is something that I, we've, uh, based off on the development seed guy in terms of creating a uh, mapathon, uh, We separate ourselves into two groups. We got ourselves together, so it was kind of like a peer effort. Um, one group in terms of like, let's learn it together. Uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with OpenStreetMap, we teach you what, how to use it, uh, how, how to use ID Editor through like the Lauren OSM um, techniques and methods that they were developed. And then, let's get it done. Just get those buildings in there. So but nicely, of, uh, you know, they need to be good. We've done some social media and through our MapTime LA. MapTime LA was sort of like the organizer for some of these Mapathon events and also some of the tutorials in terms of teaching people how to use the ID editor and JOSM. And so we started, uh, I don't know what day was the day that we started this. Yeah, so we started, I think it was March 31st was like yeah. our first, this was April 2nd, it was a Saturday, this is the Los Angeles Times. We hosted uh, three different mapping parties and I will host so many more. Um, and, but we started with the JOSM training on March 31st, then we had uh, an import party on April 2nd, then we had another import party at AirUp, which is a very good host of MapTime LA events, uh, then we had another import party at the LA Times, and then we and had another, another import, import party, party at Angel City, party. and then another one. And, and then, then another import thing too as well. And, and then yeah, and you taught how to do 3D modeling with import and data. You can see in the image, people just kind of just vanished. And uh, one of the comments that we got was like, John, there's only so many times you can call it a party. Because it's a, it's a lot of work. It's like, it's, you know, it's, it's work, you know, and we were graciously, Batbox donated, donated pizza, so did uh, the LA Times. So, so we, you know, we're, we were chugging along and, and making it happen, but it, it was a lot of work. And uh, that's what my coworker was also complaining to me. And I was like, well, but if you drink while you're doing it, then it's like more fun, right? Yeah. So, so, you know, we're, we, at the, around this point, you know, we, we had imported a, a lot of the buildings and Omar and I sat together and we were like, well, you know, like, why are, we, why are we doing this? Like, we're both like map geeks, but like, wh why? Why are we doing this? And so we hadn't really defined that, like, oh, we'll just to get the buildings in the map. But so we sat down and kind of came up with this list, like bring new users into OpenStreetMap, improve the map, catch up with other cities, prepare for disasters. There's gonna be a big earthquake that's gonna hit Los Angeles. And if there's a building data set already there, we could maybe use that to like then tag particular buildings as um, destroyed or damaged or red tagged or deficient. Um, to improve the Los Angeles Times maps. Like I said, we use these maps, so it's, it's a really helpful thing for us as well, and to encourage more edits. So these are sort of the, the basics of what we're thinking about in terms of what value this data set could be used for, for the general public. And, um, um, we're, we're, all, we're actually open to other suggestions as well. So you can see this, these are some of the very basic stuff that we came up with. And based on this kind of collaboration in terms of like why are we really doing this, 
we, we started re updating our documentation. Like on the, oh, oh, the tasking manager, we updated something. We we're like, like, why are we doing this? You know, sort of, sort of these things. And like, we started doing some more social media kind of stuff on our Twitter account uh, with the map time of like Twitter account. And I think one key thing too is that we've um, started map time and, and the map time LA chapter. Uh, we started doing tutorials. It was like, all right, so we had mapping parties where we're importing data, we're contributing data, but we should also have like uh, nights where we're like, how do you use data? Can you make maps right. with it? You know, like, can you, uh, like, bring more of the community here? So we kind of did things like use OpenStreetMap to crowdsource a map of pretty much anything. We had a night like that. And uh, we actually had map time hikes. We had these hikes where we, like, people would use, like, some of the uh, OpenStreetMap tools to go out on hikes and start mapping things, contribute, and then we pull tutorials in terms of making that stuff. And then here we also had a tutorial making 3D models uh, based on the, on, the, uh, on the tags from OpenStreetMap. This is when we started, just did the uploading some of the buildings all that height data, we were starting making these kinds of things so they can do that for those own, for their own neighborhood. So it's a sort of, of a complement, contributing and then adding um, and making maps out of it. Yeah, and there, there are some things that need to be ironed out. We, we have to clean up this import. I don't think it's going to be that much work. We've, we've done a lot of work on the get-go, but there are certain things that have been pointed out by uh, the great community on the listserv and, uh, and locally. Um, condos were incorrectly labeled as houses, so we have to go through and fix that. Garages incorrectly labeled as houses as well. And then uh, AINs for no buildings on a parcel. So for instance, there was one example of a, uh, a lifeguard um, stand that was a building on the beach and it was like heavy industrial and it wasn't actually heavy industrial so so we have to like clean up that but it's they're small so what's next um, we're trying to look for ways in terms of like experimenting with developing continued interest in this and involvement and and sort of the method that we're sort of developing in terms of hosting mapathons in conjunction with like these tutorials like are oh, you you added something onto OpenStreetMap this is what you can do with it this right. is sort of the maps you can make with it. And then like if, if sort of branching out to like uh, other professions and other people uh, that, that can come in, especially with our, as a, as a, with the technology that we have now, it sets a low, uh, a really easy bar to get into. Right. In terms of uh, adding stuff. So it sort of co kind of go coincides with like the TikTok idea of what Intel does. I mean, Intel has a year, well, I don't think they'll do it. They have a year of five minutes left. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> of, of uh, Intel has something where like one year they're going to decrease the size of their processors. The next year they're going to uh, speed up the processors. Um, so sort of applying that in terms of like ticking it, in terms of like adding contributing work to OpenStreetMap data and what have you, these are some of the items that we're actually going to continue on right after the imports. Um, there's a huge list of, from the National State and Local Register of Historic Places that, I mean, it's, it's sitting on there on a lot of state websites and, and that we can start like with the buildings that we have can add that information in there uh, for that kind of effort. And then talk, which is making stuff with it, experimenting with the OSM data with tools, uh, making field trips, hikes, meeting in different areas. A lot of times some of these meeting groups are like being held like centrally located like mm -hmm. us. LA is huge and it takes many moons to even get to Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. um, and that's if you have a car. That's if you have a car too. Uh, although now we have a transit line that gets over the next one line. Uh, but meeting in different areas kind of would help uh, like bring people, other people together and sort of promote it through like finding windows of opportunities, um, especially with the recent earthquakes. There was like one small earthquake that kind of spooked LA and like we're always spooked when something happens. And like we started, if it rains. Yeah, we started doing something where like, well, well let's have a night where we can get like some, add some buildings on there and we can uh, map, some, map our neighborhood in terms of like what the earthquake, earth, what the earthquakes would do and stuff like that. John Kingdon was the sort of guy, he, he's a uh, political scientist. He kind of coined this of finding window of opportunities. So like, if there's like an event or something that gets published in the paper, <clears throat> maybe reaching out to the paper and say like, hey, like we can make a map of what you guys have been kind of doing and stuff like that. You can use OpenStreetMap data. I think it's just sort of experimenting with like reaching out to other groups, um, particularly journalists, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of like uh, utilizing OpenStreetMap as a way to kind of go. So, so these maps that we looked at, this is New York, everyone. Um, the colors here are actually color coded. These are all buildings, but anything that's white is building equals yes, and anything that's yellow is building equals something other than yes. So Seattle again, and this is Los Angeles today. So there's a lot of really cool metadata that we're adding to the map that we're really excited about, um, and we hope you guys are too. Thanks so much. If you have questions, please. These are all the uses that have contributed and uh, added to OpenStreetMap and also the discussions that we've done through on the GitHub. So thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> I, 
Uh, thank you guys for this really great talk. And I have a question in two regards. The first uh, question is about how to communicate like with the local community. Because uh, like you said, you know, buildings can be misaligned, there could be missing parts and such. So how, what was the best, uh, you know, communication platform you guys used to let people know, okay, we're doing this, uh, we have mistakes, uh, could you help us uh, you like correct those? The, big, the yeah. one tool we used for communicating was GitHub. GitHub. Um, we, we done some of the communication through that. I also, I also spammed a whole bunch of people on OpenStreetMap.org to the point where I almost wrote a script to like write messages out in mass because they wanted people in the local community to know that this was going on, to know that their data may be changing. So uh, just a lot of like copying and pasting marks down files and going straight on the thing. Hello, this is John again. Can you please? I, I see. So that, that happens on the OpenStreetMap forum, right? Right. Well, in, in, in the website as well. It's like in the website. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. And the sec second question is about like uh, uh, the, the data sources you guys have, whether this is a scalable solution to, you know, uh, extend to other cities in, in the U.S. Well, we, um, a lot of the stuff we've talked about, it's, it's well documented on our GitHub page. It's um, OSM, if you just, actually if you just go to labuildings.com, mm -hmm. that's where our import uh, effort is going through. LA Buildings Import. LA Buildings Import. Yeah. Dot com. <laughs> But uh, it's, it's all that stuff is sort of well documented and it could be sort of like forked over in terms of like right, using information. So or you can contact us. We've, we've contacted New York, the people who do New York, to get some guidance in terms of what they did. Yeah. So it's, it's a matter of just reaching out to those individuals. Hi. Do you, um, I work for the county here and was participated in some of the import for the Seattle area. And uh, I'm curious, are you, um, I, some of the people I worked with probably did reference the materials that you're talking about from New York and stuff, but um, I'm curious how the ongoing effort will go and whether or not you there is a way, uh, an effort to abstract the process and improve, like take what you've done, and I know, I'm sure you've um, distilled some of your documentation and stuff because it all starts as a mess and then, and then um, matures sort of. And uh, with, is it, does it make sense to have a project that's, that's, uh, a guide nationally or you know so you're telling us to go to the LA project but that started as a New York project will, uh, will those things come together as a, as a unified um, system documentation kind of thing all depends on the community right uh, if we can all get together we can do this I'm trying to branch out just from Los Angeles because you know at the LA Times we we talk in terms of Southern California and California so we're thinking you know like one of our future projects is let's talk about the buildings in Orange County and the Orange County, which is just south of us, doesn't have like a GIS uh, organized group. Uh, at least they don't have it on like a data portal. So they've got individual cities buildings there. So we're just going to kind of investigate their data, see how good it is. It could be really bad and we don't want to import it. Um, you know, so we just have to kind of go through those processes again. But there's really great import documentation on uh, just like how to, the guidelines on the OSM wiki for, for any import. Yeah, already we, we did a lot of conversations with Mark Greninger, who's this great guy at LA County um, GIS, and he just got a new role. And I've been talking to him a lot, and he's he's interested in like the 3D modeling aspect of it. Go with the height. I just want to say thank you guys. Um, so I'm from Miami, and we're actually replicating. You guys have really beautiful documentation. You may sell yourself short and be like, yeah, we're still working on our documentation, but for our initiative, we're actually modeling it after your guys's. Um, so we're several months, obviously, behind you guys, but you're allowing us to kind of leapfrog significantly. Um, and so we're hoping to emulate a lot of the decisions that you guys um, have made. Um, I want to, so yeah, that's a, that's a shameless plug. I'm actually giving a five because we're so far away from what you guys are doing. I'm doing a little five minute lightning talk about kind of the, the basics of the Miami initiative. Um, but I want to ask specifically on a more technical note um, about your decision to not join the addresses. Um, we're, we're obviously facing that same choice um, and we've kind of tentatively decided to go ahead and move forward with those cases um, where there is a clean one-to-one -one relationship with the addresses right. and the buildings. And I just wonder like, what was your guys' calculus in determining that? Because um, for those for which there is not a one-to-one -one relationship, we're just gonna put those in the manual inspection batches that we also, learning from you guys, are going to divide up into block groups. Right. Um, so 
if you could just expound upon that. And thanks again. This is really awesome. I, I was the guy recording the whole presentation, even though I know it's being recorded as well. I just wanted my own little copy yeah. of it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. From Southern California. Um, yeah, so it was just, it was more of like a technical thing that was just going to prevent us there. And then now, like now that I've had like a year to think about like what my interpretation of mapping is, I have like questions about whether an address should be attached to a building. Should the address be attached to a building or should it be attached to a doorway? You know, what, what's... Should it be a node or should it be attached to a way? And so there were just like too many like kind of questions there that it was just it was going to stop us from doing it. And we, we got we had to have some momentum or we would have just crashed. I, I, and I I think it goes to like there is no one template. I get that goes to to your question. There is no one template to sort of talk about what you're going to import because you have varying data sets, you have varying people with interests, uh, and then the, the culture itself of each city. And then of each country, if you can say, like, there's certain countries that may, may prefer having an import a certain way. Um, and, and, and it could be, like, language and how we, we, we speak to each other in terms of the words that we use that sort of has different meanings. You know, I think there was some issue where, like, uh, uh, some of the, uh, like, they were talking about like, these trails, these types of trails in England um, where they were, they, were, they were reworded differently. I think something like that Stamen was kind of alluding to, but, like, in some countries, like uh, certain trails was named differently and it was tagged differently in another country. And there's a conflict in terms of how they use the words are being utilized, which is high and interesting. So it, there's no one template. It's sort of just readapting this template. But I think the effort is still the same, if anything. It's just, but the cool thing is that the documentation is on there and you can sort of take pieces of it as well. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.